In the liturgy for this evening around the world, and in many places where it's already been celebrated, places like with Pope Francis was literally this morning for us, but it was evening for them. But all around the world in this celebration of the Lord's Supper, there is a threefold focus of our liturgy. And that is the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the ordained priesthood, and the command of fraternal charity, or otherwise known as the mandatum, the command of love. As we began this Mass tonight, our opening collect, which was our opening prayer, mentioned the sacrifice that is entrusted to us anew. The sacrifice that St. Paul even speaks about in our second reading today that says the new covenant in Christ Jesus. The new and everlasting covenant. Ancient and yet new. The amazing thing about tonight is the sacrament that we celebrate, the sacrifice of Christ our Lord Jesus as he sacrificed himself, is the Passover sacrifice that we heard about in our first reading tonight. So it's an ancient ritual. But what our opening prayer reminds us of is what happened on that Last Supper or the Lord's Supper as he celebrated that ancient ritual of Passover. He celebrated also something new. And each and every time we come here to the Eucharist, we too celebrate something anew. We too celebrate something that is ancient, something that is much older than even Christ himself that goes back to the history of the people of God, the Jewish people, the Israelites, as they were being brought out of slavery. So we celebrate something that is very ancient, but here on this altar it becomes new for us each and every time we come here. Because each and every time we come to the Eucharist, our lives are different. There's something different going on. There's maybe new challenges and and new struggles in our life. I'd even beg to say, even for those who attend daily Mass, each and every day there is still something new for us in the Eucharist. And every Sunday as we gather as community... Every Sunday as we gather as the Lord's communion, he makes new in us his covenant. He makes new in us the sacrifice of the cross that is made real and new here on the altar. This sacrifice uh, that is ancient, but also very new for each and every one of us. He makes it new in us. He renews that covenant with us. And I think sometimes as we see the world around us maybe falling apart, as the topic of Catholic conversation often is there's so many fallen away Catholics, right? I think there's every single one of us in here has a family member, a loved one, a very close friend that was a Catholic and has drifted away, has fallen away from the Catholic faith. And I think at the heart of that is a gradual laziness or a gradual disbelief in the truth of the Eucharist. Is in a gradual forgetfulness that this covenant is made new with us each and every time we come. That this is just isn't some boring old ritual that's been going on since Christ. This isn't just something that the disciples dreamed up after Christ died and rose again. That this is the covenant that is made new with us. And if we ourselves bring ourselves with whatever is going on in our lives to this sacrifice anew each time, then it offers God an opportunity through our open hearts, through our openness to Him, it offers God an opportunity to renew that covenant in us. And so that's why we celebrate tonight as the institution of the Eucharist. Because we all know that without the Eucharist, there would be no church. Any church 
Have you ever thought about that? Without the Eucharist, without Christ establishing this Last Supper, this Lord's Supper, which has its roots in the Passover, which is all part of God's plan for salvation, without the Eucharist, there is no church. I don't care whether it is Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist or Mormon or whatever denomination we want to look at, no church is possible without the Eucharist. It is from the Eucharist that the church is formed. And it's from that Eucharist that we have this desire in us to really know and see Christ. And it is fulfilled as we receive him. One of my favorite quotes was from uh, St. John Chrysostom, who was called Golden Tongue because he was just a a world-renowned preacher and teacher. And one of my favorite quotes of his says that, How many are they that seek to see Jesus, who seek to touch his hands, who seek to see his face. And yet, each and every Eucharist were able to touch Jesus. Each and every Eucharist were able to meet him face to face. And not only meet him, to receive him to receive his body and blood, soul and divinity, the greatest gift that God has ever given to us, we truly see, we truly receive. But yet so many people out there still want to see Jesus, experience Jesus in a new and profound way. This is the most profound way that we'll ever experience Jesus. This is the most profound way that we'll ever know God's love. On this night, Christ established his new covenant in his blood. And for 2,000 years, with the exception of Good Fridays, which is tomorrow, this Eucharist has been celebrated in the manner that Christ himself instituted. And the only way that this is possible is through the institution of the priesthood. That second thing that we celebrate tonight, the institution of the priesthood of Jesus Christ. And the interesting thing about this is that what St. John recalls is not the Passover meal or the Last Supper, but the washing of feet. The interesting thing about that is the Old Testament priesthood, the priesthood that Jesus would have grown up with, the Levitical priesthood, within the ordination rite of the Levitical priesthood, there was a foot washing. There was a washing of the feet of the man who was going to become a priest in the Levitical priesthood. Yet what Christ wanted to do in instituting the priesthood by a washing of feet was altogether different and new, just like he made the Passover feast different and new. And at the core of that for Christ was humility. On his knees, humbly washing feet. And we believe in the Catholic Church that the priest is called and ordained to stand in the person of Christ. In the person of Christ, Christ the head of the church, which is known as in persona Christi. And to be quite honest with you, that can be overwhelming as a priest. To know that a priest is ordained to stand in the person of Christ that we celebrate tonight the institution of the priesthood, that the priest is standing on behalf of Christ, the head of the church. As a priest, that's overwhelming at times. It's daunting to think that God has called me to stand in the person of his Son before you, to celebrate the Eucharist, to celebrate the sacraments, to preach the gospel. How is it possible for me, for any priest, to stand in the person of Christ? The only way this is possible is in humility. It's humbly walking before our God. Humbly doing as Christ himself did. It is a priesthood that in its authenticity is not about power or authority or even status. 
No, to stand in the person of Christ as the head of the church, to be a priest of Jesus Christ, is to serve and to love. To, do, to lay down one's life for others. And that's what we celebrate in the washing of the feet. Tonight, by the grace of God and the blessing of ordination, Christ himself washes the feet of 12 disciples from St. Patrick's Church. Christ himself celebrates, rather makes new his covenant in the Eucharist, where he alone is both priest and victim, where he alone is both sacrifice and lamb. And it is here that all of us, by the great mandatum of Christ, are called to service, to service of one another, to service of love in God and, and of our neighbor. This is the threefold call tonight, the threefold focus and the threefold uh, call of God for us to participate fully, both in the Eucharist and the institution of the priesthood and in the great command to love. And above all, this night might seem heavy. There's a lot going on. There's a lot that is asked of us. There's a lot that really, in a sense, tugs on our heartstrings as we celebrate this Last Supper, this Eucharist, as we process with our Lord Jesus and watch with him in the garden, as we enter into a quiet, dull, dark, cold church tomorrow for Good Friday and stay there until the Easter Vigil. It might be a lot to take in. And I'm sure the disciples felt overwhelmed. But they said yes. They said amen. They allowed Jesus to do for them what he wanted them to do for others. They allowed Jesus to give them the great model of love in their 